Well, good morning. Tomorrow marks exactly six months since my administration began. I think it's a fitting moment to take a look at our economy, where we were six months ago, what we've achieved since then, and what I believe uh, uh, we've, uh, I, I, I believe we're where we're headed. You might remember some of the predictions. If I became president, I'd bring the end to capitalism. <laughs> Worst inflation since 1981. Well, in six months into my administration, the U.S. economy has experienced the highest economic growth rate in nearly 40 years. Inflation broke another 40-year record high. 8.6%. 9.1%. Yeah. Highest rate in 40 years. Folks. It turns out capitalism is alive and very well. We're making serious progress to ensure that it works the way it's supposed to work, for the good of the American people. Consumer confidence has taken a hit. Pretty much most of my paycheck goes to paying for my gas. I call it inflation, but somebody's, somebody's pocket will get inflated. We're the ones hurting down here. So for all those predictions of doom and gloom six months in, here's where we stand. Record growth. The stats were actually worse than economists expected. There are worries that the U.S. could be headed for a recession. Soaring inflation, worse than expected. New fears of a possible recession. Look, we brought this economy back from the brink. The Dow dropped nearly 1,200 points. Growing concerns about the economy with the stock market taking another steep plunge. The worst in more than 30 years. And as our economy has come roaring back, We've seen some price increases. Some folks have raised worries that this could be a sign of persistent inflation. But that's not our view. Our experts believe, and the data shows, that most of the price increases we've seen are, were expected and are expected to be temporary. It's not temporary. It's not transitory. The average household is now spending nearly $500 more a month than in 2021. When will this end? The end may not be in sight. I look forward to continuing to build this economy. I'm incredibly optimistic about what we're going to be able to build together in the next six months and years to come. The United States. This is America, Jack. We're Americans. This is the power of suggestion. The ultimate gala spectacle. You want to hear the truth? Yeah, I want to hear the truth. The, the, the truth is, it's cruel symptoms can strike anyone. <laughs> that, that's all I'm going to say at this time. What creates an extraordinary life? It's an extraordinary mindset. Now that I got your attention, listen to this. Let's go! We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Control the old outward. Control is good. Five. Rocky Cotton. Three. Two. One. The Wayne Dupree Program. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. My name is Wayne Dupree. And uh, we got the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hunch Bailey Jr. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Another week. <clears throat> Nothing but a wake up left. And hanging in his jammies is JR from Minnesota. What's up, Jay? Hey, how's it going, Wayne? Welcome to pre election day. Pre election day. L ladies and gentlemen, we got a whole lot to talk about. And I'm pissed off right now. I'm pissed off a whole lot of stuff, but I'm going to hold back some stuff until after. I shouldn't. But I'm gonna hold back some stuff until after the midterms, because you you don't do people like that. <laughs> you don't do people like that. You don't treat you, you treat people how you want to be treated. Martin Luther King said it. Jesus said it. I believe it, and that settles it. So that I mean, that's that's how you treat you treat people how you want to be treated. You want to you treat you loyal to somebody. I know you. you Oh, I ain't even gonna go into it. I I ain't gonna go into it. I don't want to go into it, but I'll go into it if I need to. All right, I will go into it if I need to, because we got some anti-Trump, never Trump, and then we got some. Uh, uh, I don't even know what the new crew is. Um, uh, fair brother Trump. Maybe that's it. Fair brother Trump. I don't know. Well, it's pretty maybe. easy. Pretty easy choice. I mean, if you. Yeah. You take away all the all the drama and whatnot. You got a pretty easy choice. You're either on the Trump trip, team, man. you're either on the Trump team, or you're on the Paul Ryan team. That's man, y'all trip. I, I, I'm serious. I'm serious. Y'all trip. And you know what? You're being led down by a whole lot of um um um. Uh, what's the one that went blowing this um um flute toot tooting tooting horn? Little boy blue. 
Yeah. Can blow your horn. The sheep's in the middle and the cows in the corner. I, I mean, or uh, or the one that led the blind, or um, the one that led the mice out of town. Which one was Pied, that? One? Pied Piper. The Pied Piper. Pied Piper man, 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 the Pied Piper is 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 doing a number on a whole lot of y'all right now. You know, I mean, I got. You know what? God darn, I don't want to go into this. I I, I don't want to go into this. I don't because I. But I. But I've never seen so many people. Maybe they were anti-Trump in the first goddamn place. You know what I'm saying? Some of them were. Some of them were. You know, I mean, it's like, well, I saw a tweet, y'all. I saw a tweet that said, Trump Trump had his time. Time somebody else. He didn't have his time. No. They stole the first two years. <laughs> and and not, not only that, it's not Trump's time, damn it. It's my time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, dude, they, 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 they. They tried to stick it to him for four years. Then they tried to stick it to him for the two years after that. What time has he had? What t- Literally, what time has he had? The Democrats were against him. The media was against him. Republicans were against him. People, social media was against him. You had all these people against him. And then I was like, well, Trump had his time. How? And they co-opted the language. At first, they co-opted GOP. Now they've co-opted conservative. Mm. You know, they, act, they say all these conservatives... Are lining up against Donald Trump? No, no, no. It's not. You're either it's on not. the McConnell team or you're on the Trump team. Yeah, it's no, 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 no. You're Ben no. Shapiro or you're freaking yeah. Steve Bannon. That's just the way it is. Everybody on Daily Wire. The Daily Wire wasn't Trump anyway. Yeah. I tell you that right now. I say the same thing about Town Hall. The, yeah, they weren't Trump. So, I mean, they didn't support Trump. Matt Walsh was for somebody else to begin with in the first place. And Matt Walsh came out over the weekend. I can't believe that he said the thing about Ron DeSantis and stuff. You know what? I Let's rewind everything over the last year and a half. I'm surprised Trump didn't say anything for a year and a half. I give it to him for not saying anything. Trump, that's right. Donald Trump didn't say anything for a year and a half about Ron DeSantis. And, 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 you know, people, I, he should have waited until Wednesday. Why? In, right. the first, in the first two minutes of the Miami rally, he endorsed DeSantis. For yeah. Governor. Yeah. But, but DeSantis had this thing wrapped up last year. I know. The Democrats pulled their money out last year. You know, the fact is, is they're just trying to drum up trouble in paradise. I mean, they see what's gun, what's coming tomorrow or end the next end of the week if whenever they count it and everybody knows the future of the republican party goes through the american first MAGA movement like carrie lake blake masters doug Mas- i mean just go on down the list like those are the people that need to get elected and then you elect trump and then we can make some of the concrete changes we need to in the in the nation how many magas how many MAGA people were in congress during trump's first administration about three, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what? I I was reading a friend of mine's um, uh, Telegraph uh, uh, entry. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this. And for all those that are watching, the millions and millions across America, <laughs> I wish I'd listen to this. The conservative backlash to Trump's desanctimonious remark was clearly manufactured. You know, these anti-Trump shells were just waiting for him to say something negative about DeSantis so that they could attack. This line that they've been pushing about attacking a fellow Republican two days before the midterm was obviously coordinated. They had that one in the chamber ready to go. DeSantis had it coming with his disrespect and obstinance toward Trump for the last 18 months. The DeSantis faction is just a reimagined Never Trump. It's all the Never Trumpers from 2016 plus the Trumpism without Trump types who deserted for various reasons during the first term. DeSantis is uncharismatic, uninspired, and fundamentally incapable of having a revolutionary effect like Trump. They're not for him. They're only propping him up as an avatar against Trump. Thank you. Gives the same vibes as that against Trump cover from the National Review in 2016. I think I, I think it would be positive for Trump to have 
to overcome a significant primary challenge because it will force him to differentiate himself from the GOP establishment as he did in 2016. Unchallenged, he will run a campaign like he did in 2020. His first inter-party challenge in seven years will force him to sharpen his edge against and outflank his opponents within the party, not necessarily a bad thing. Trump was a, was a true phenomenon, and it is suspicious to me that these assorted eclectic internet types who advocated for Trump as a true cultural force in 2016 have transformed so seamlessly to shilling for some... <laughs> I don't even know how to say that word. Republican politician. Shouldn't you go back to being a lifestyle guru or uh, a, a book salesman or wherever that you were burned out on Trump? I think about guys like Cernovich or Scott Adams who coalesced around Trump in 2016 who are now shelling DeSantis. You wrote in on Trump's coattails. When he initiated a global wave, now you're we're supposed to discard Trump on the advice of the Dilbert guy and a mindset coach to vote for some Republican politician. Don't do not get tricked into buying back the system with Ness with the next best thing or lesser of two evils logic. Trump surged in office on the back of an open rebellion against all polit against all politics. I'm not going to enthuse it enthusiastically get behind some wet blanket establishment Republican politician as my second choice, just in case the revolution fails. The whole system is corrupt. If not, Trump is nothing. No, if it's not Trump, it's nothing. I think, I think one of the things, and I agree with that article, by the way, uh, one of the things that I came to over the weekend, we've been sharing some different stories and things like that. But one of the things that I came to over the weekend is I, I, I we, we tend to have short memories. Like I'm looking back at this, like this started with Trump. And then I thought about you out in the, on the, on the bus tour and the tea party and all that. They did this to us twice before mm -hmm. this, all this operation with the Santas is, is a wedge. It's something to split our vote. That's all it is. They did the same thing with Mitt Romney. They did the same thing with John McCain. Neither one of those two, if you recall, going through the primary battles, neither one of those two were the ones we wanted. They ended up forcing yeah, yeah. this guy on us, knowing he was going to lose. Knowing damn well uh, Romney was going to lose. I think that was in the cards, and it was the old school GOP that were afraid of the Tea Party. They were terrified of the Tea Party. And this is a, ter this is a Tea Party that's just exponentially bigger. And they're doing the same thing. And all you have to do is look at the supporters. You, you're, you're, you wanna be on the Ryan team? You wanna be on, on the Ben Shapiro team, the Mitch McConnell team, Kevin McCarthy? Cause that's the DeSantis team. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. They, they talk this smack about people getting tired of Trump. I watched the Miami rally and I watched the Pennsylvania rally. There's you watch fire there. There's, There's a lot of fire. People. A lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there, and I and I um, sent a couple of pictures to my boys yesterday. You saw the DeSantis rally, and you saw the Trump rally. Oh yeah, you saw the DeSantis rally. And you saw see, the Trump I didn't rally. see the DeSantis rally. It's like they were hiding it. Was it small? <laughs> It well, wasn't a concert, so it wasn't a crowd. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right it was small. Um, From what well, I understand, it was in deep red territory where Trump's was in deep blue territory in Miami Dade. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a last minute thing because um, DeSantis didn't have that on his on his schedule until Trump said that he was doing the thing for Rubio. So to make it not look bad, he, he went out and put out something for himself um, for you know, and you know the, um, the people came out. They call it dueling, dueling rallies, but y'all don't want y'all don't want to do that. Don't do that. You can hurt <laughs> don't, yourself. Don't do it to DeSantis. Don't do it. Right, right. You're going right. to lose him as a governor if he does yeah. this. Yeah. DeSantis do has a great political career. He's probably one of my favorite governors until Carrie Lake wins tomorrow. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I haven't seen enough things DeSantis does other than the people supporting him. And he knows going up against Trump's a suicide mission. He knows. Like, he, nobody yeah. survives Trump. 
Like, right. I mean, let's ask, be real. Ask the, ask the cruise supporters. Right. <laughs> but, 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 Jason, when you have a hedge hunt, well, a hedge fund guy who has been given, who, who gave to um, um, uh, McCain, Obama, he's a third ranked person that has been. Under George Soros and somebody else, he's a third-ranked person out there who's given millions. He gave ten million to DeSantis, uh, and 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 said, "I'm ready to I go." Wanna get, he, I want to I want to get the old Republican Party back. That's right. I want right. to get a party back that's closer to corporate interest. Said it in his own words, verbat right like that. Yep. He's not even hiding it, folks. And it's not about DeSantis. No, it's not. It's not. He's a tool. DeSantis should understand. Well, then again, he has an opportunity again, to soar. Then again, maybe, maybe he's a career. Uh, I'm not going to say puppet because, well, that's where I was going. But Trump didn't use him as a puppet. Okay, Trump helped him get in office, but Trump didn't tell him what to do while he was in as governor. But he rode the coattails of Donald Trump. Is what I'm trying to say. Definitely. And now he's riding the coattails of these millionaires. Okay. And the GOP, McConnell's and McCarthy's and the bigger names. Not the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not going to say puppet. I'm not going to say, but he rides a horse better than Roy Rogers, boy. I'm telling you, he, he knows how to ride it. Okay. I just don't think that all the stuff that Trump went through, any other politician would have folded after the first or second year. After the first or second year, okay? They'd have been in prison. I mean, every single agency in the United States government was on him. Anything you ever did in your whole life. The cleanest president in the history of the world. He's (laughs) been investigated more than the last 10 presidents combined. I'd have got the death penalty. I'd have been in the gas chamber. Right. You know what I mean? There ain't no way. Well, it's that funny. Guy, that's One of my friends, we have a $100 <laughs> bet. He says Trump is going to be indicted and won't be able to run for president. Like, people still believe this stuff. I know. I, know. I think like, he'll be indicted, but that won't stop him from running for well, president. Well, stop him from running, right. Yeah, he's not getting convicted. Like, it's crazy. I think hey, you know what, though? I think with DeSantis, like, we just got to see what his next move is. You know, we get through tomorrow. That. You know, and I think. I think he's probably in a spot where, you know, you figure two, three years ago, he was kind of nobody. And now he's got all these big money guys coming behind him saying, hey, you could be president. And I mean, that's tempting. And so especially when they especially when they hand you the check. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, what would anybody do in that spot? Like, hey, you know, he's doing the right things and that kind of thing. But uh, he and when Trump (laughs) declares, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, then we'll see what DeSantis next play is. And then. It's he raised. All, hopefully, it's all a moot point. He got two hundred million dollars mm-hmm. for oh, a race yeah. for a governor's race down there in Florida. He got that 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 the Dems pulled their money out, but he got two hundred two hundred two hundred million dollars for a governor. He has, he has an opportunity to show some character right now. Right. If yeah. I was him, I'd have a meeting with myself and be like, "Self, <laughs> I need I need to go show these people the door." But. Right. Right, and, and and actually, he really has an obligation because the more I thought about it over the weekend, I was like, well, God, dog, man, he hasn't said nothing about whether um, the um, the 2020, I don't know anybody who's asked him that question. What do you think about the 2020 election? Was it stolen? Everybody else gets it. Why not him? He needs to get interviewed by somebody serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because. I do. Because these people that are coming out for him that were for Trump, they just figure since Trump anointed him for the, the governorship of Florida, he's on our side. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm not saying that he's not on our side, but he, I mean, I haven't seen anything uh, now other than, <laughs> other than, I mean, a whole lot of us don't believe in uh, I, um, um, uh, business. Uh, uh, a whole lot of a whole lot of us don't believe the government should be in business. Well, he's changed that down in Florida because he did a whole lot of things from the government side for business. 
Okay. He he did. He, I mean, I, I watched him. I, I, mean, I was like, well, damn, he, he's, telling, <laughs> he's telling businesses they can't do that. And he tell, but Democrats do that, though. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's I, funny. I when, it's, I say when it happens in Venezuela, they call it a bribe. When it happens in the United States, they call it lobbying. Uh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Always follow the money. I don't know. Donald Trump, I mean, to me, to me, it can, I can clearly see that Donald Trump, um, everything, everything that has happened to him. Look, I'm not saying Donald Trump is perfect. I, I've never said Donald Trump was perfect. As a matter of fact, I've been against, especially with the Syria thing. I was against him first, first off with the Syria uh, entry uh, thing when he listened to uh, uh, McCain and um, his girlfriend, uh, Lindsey Graham. You know, I was like, no, don't do that. No, no, don't do that. Don't, no. Oh, man. Yeah, me too. And the, and, the, and the vaccine too. And I mean, I, oh, man, don't don't push the vaccine. Look, somebody, somebody said to me yesterday, they were like, um, uh, DeSantis saved the country. I swear to you, I swear to you, this <laughs> post, this post came at DeSantis saved the country. What, what, the country club in Florida or what? During, during the pandemic. DeSantis say the country. Somebody tweeted that out yesterday. Didn't you tell me, or didn't didn't Angel say well, you guys went to CPAC or something down there? To Orlando. Yes. Right? Yes. And yes. She was talking about they were locked down too. We were locked down. So as a matter of fact, let's kill that myth. It's like Christy yeah. Nome. Let's kill that myth. Exactly. I even asked the, the um the cabbie when he was driving us to the hotel. And I didn't see really anybody out on the highway from the hotel, from the airport to the hotel. I was like, how's everything down here? Um, and I, I, I guess he was Haitian. Uh, everything would be all right once we open back up. I was like, open back up? I thought y'all were open up down here. Okay. And then when we get to the hotel, you couldn't even get in without the mask on. You couldn't walk around the, the hotel without the mask on. You couldn't go to CPAC without the mask on. But he's going out there saying that <laughs> we, we're, we're, um, we're open. As a matter of fact, I, I forgot about this. I don't play it for you. I, I, I said, I forgot about this, and maybe y'all forgot about this too. Here's, I think, the, the most important thing with the data. If you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, the chance of you getting seriously ill or dying from COVID is effectively zero. If you look at the people that are being admitted to hospitals, uh, over 95% of them are either not fully vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. And Damn, so man. these vaccines are saving lives. They are reducing mortality. Mortality in nursing homes since we rolled out the vaccines in December is down over 95% due Hold to on. COVID. Hold mortality on. for elderly people since we rolled out the vaccines is down nearly 90%. And so we're proud in Florida that we put seniors first on that because they were the most vulnerable. We have 85% of our seniors that are vaccinated and about 75% of folks over the age of 50. We have no mandate. We've provided information to people um, and, and we've uh, been very honest about any data that, that comes out. And I can tell you that if you look, uh, you are seeing people that are vaccinated. For whatever reason, some I think can test positive if you're vaccinated, but they don't get seriously ill in, except maybe rare instances. There's always one-offs on stuff. But I can tell you in Florida, your chance of surviving if you're vaccinated is close to 100%. And so we've worked very hard to get those vaccines into all our elderly communities and give it to other folks um, who, who could use it. Obviously, when you talk about some of the younger folks, the uptake has been less. I think that the distribution uh, was very effective that we did. And I think we had a lot of good uptake on the Johnson & Johnson in March and into April we have saw a noticeable decline in J&J &J when they pulled it back because of the FDA. I think it was a huge mistake. I said so at the time. And I think that that sent a message that maybe this is not something that, uh, that they should be doing. I think that's been unfortunate because I took it. I think it's, I think it's effective. Brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. I, somebody said that to me yesterday. I was like, oh, crap. I did. Yeah, he did. He did push that, didn't he? You know, okay. I mean, it's. I'll just say it again because I know it's going to happen again because it happened with the cruzites. Don't use your emotions. Exactly. 
Step back a few feet and pay attention. This is not about Ron DeSantis. This let's is about use, MAGA. Well, yeah, let's use Ted Cruz's example. Pretty competent politician. I like a lot of his positions. I listen to his podcast. I like him. I like him. I read his I book. Too. Great guy. He got a nuclear bomb dropped on him by Trump, and he's not going to be a serious presidential candidate for another ever. 10 years. Right, if ever. And You know what he so did DeSantis wrong? He listened smarter. to Glenn Beck. Yeah, DeSantis has got to be smart enough to to do that, and he's probably caught up in the moment and whatnot. But we should get to these midterms, though, guys. Like mm-hmm. this stuff is exciting as hell. Well, what um, I came out yesterday morning, and I was, and I said, "There's no way that Republicans are going to lose the House. There's no way. I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. Uh-oh. If it does happen, there's going to be crap in the streets." Okay, I think, but I can't see it. I think a difference this time too, because I know a lot of people are worried about this. Um, we've got boots on the ground this time. I'm not saying there's not going to be any fraud committed against us, but they're going to. If there is any large type fraud, they're already starting to find it. They canceled thirty. There's thirty five hundred ballots right now in the city of Philadelphia that if somebody doesn't show up before election day to validate them, are getting thrown out. Okay. Mail in ballots. This is happening all over the country. They're not going to be able to do it again. He woke us up. We we were asleep in 2020. We had no idea they were capable of doing something like that. And he was telling us the whole time. That's what I said. He's like, guys, yeah. mail-in ballots are going to steal it. He was yeah. starting that early. And everybody's like, ah, Trump. That's exactly what I what said. They right. done, what they should have yep. done, what they should have done when they put that paper up on that plate glass window in the place where they were counting ballots, we should have threw bricks through the window. Yeah. I'm serious. It's that but- important. But I think this the, election will be wild because somebody's brain is totally breaking. You know, conservatives, yeah. we're convinced that everything's pointing in the right direction. We've got great candidates. We're going to win. And on the left, they're convinced they're voting against Hitler. Like they have convinced everybody that like the end of democracy is here if we lose. So come Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever they're done, somebody's brain is just exploding. Like, oh my God, what just happened? Oh, they will. So, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be uh, compilations, uh, the, the the video compilations where they show the people freaking out and crying. Oh yeah, like they did for uh, for Clinton. Yeah, I mean it, it's going to be the same. Now, see, this is this is where this is where I disagree with my um, with my with my co-host because. Um, the media is coming out saying that um, the engagement or the enthusiasm is tied now. I don't believe that. No, I don't believe anything they say. I don't believe that. I believe that so many people are frustrated that many people. Now, I know it's happening in Georgia, but that's but that's a situ, that's a situationary thing in Georgia. That's 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 different. That's not across the country. I think across the country, I think that I think the vote might. I think it will be a, a little bit more than um, the last midterms, but I don't think it's going to be too much more because Democrats, all their stuff at home, their, their kitchen table politics, their gas, their food and stuff. Yeah, I think they're switching over to Republicans this time. To And I don't think that they're going to be pissed off if Democrats are. I, I really don't. I really don't. With, with the economy and crime at the top, I really don't think that they're right. Be I hope, but, well, I think that I, I hope oh, you're I right. I hope you're right, but I think there will still be an element of paid provocateurs. But think about Antifa that, types. The last time I, but when did anti? Okay, I think I put this in the chat. When did BLM show up? BLM showed up when somebody got shot. They didn't show up for the political side. They showed up for a racial side. Okay, uh, Antifa. Antifa. Seriously. Ever since that Tifa had that little city up there in um, um, Washington State and whatnot, you haven't heard the chat. <laughs> yeah, you really haven't heard anything from them across the country, really. Seriously, now uh, with Biden still in office, though, unless in, unless he puts out the stand firm, stand fast, unless he does some crazy stuff like that. I really don't see him coming out and doing anything because a lot of them got to eat too. Now, don't get me wrong. They might, 
They might. I, I just don't see it. And maybe I'm the eternal optimist on this one. I just see a whole lot of people across America that are hurting right now and going into That's a true. winter, going into a winter where the gas bills are going to go up. They ain't going to be out there um, uh, uh, protesting in the winter. I tell you that right now. You know, I mean, now you might have some people, you might have some hackers and stuff that might go wild on various social media program um, platforms and stuff. But I don't think that they're going to be out there marching and stuff. They had a reparations um, rally over the weekend in Washington, D.C. They had a they had a nice size turnout, but it wasn't huge. You know why? Because, you know, when that weather started hitting you in November and December. <laughs> oh, That's true. That's activists true. change, man. Activists <laughs> change, you know. I want, I'm not saying everybody's going to take to the streets. I'm just saying you have a significant portion of the Democrat Party that's sitting there and their brain, they believe democracy will end if if Republicans win. Like they've been convinced of that. You know, even some normies, like they don't quite conceptualize. Well, they've that. always thought that. They've right. always but I that. but I They're tell still you watching network television. Well, the, <laughs> the messaging has just gone so over the top this time. I mean, think yeah, of it. Yeah, like you're right. patches, not like they've normalized causing conservatives fascists. Like that's insane. You know? I've, got women, I've got women in my state that are going to they're going to prioritize abortion over protecting the children from the beastly jab that they will oh certainly be mandatory if or little Josh Shapiro is elected. Off. You know, what you say, Jason? I said, or just all the transgender stuff and cutting their junk mm-hmm. off. I mean, and women are going to determine this election. Like suburban moms, man, like you piss them off, you mess with their kids, you raise their prices, like yeah. they will be heard. I want to see something. I want to see what happens in Pennsylvania, man. I, I'll tell you what. I'm not convinced that these polls are right. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really not. I looked at one that broke it down pretty much. And there's like a, a three point swing this way and a four point swing this way. And Republicans are lying when they're getting asked questions in the polling, especially here. You think they are? I, I, I do. I, I don't. I think people are afraid. Yep. I I, I I know that from my own street. You know, when Trump was being was running in 2016, there was 10 Trump families on my street. Now there's only two of us. You know, and I know they haven't changed their minds. They're just not putting their signs out. I just can't see Fetterman winning that election. I can't. Oh no, see he's it. not going to win. I'm talking about the governor race. Oh, okay. Fetterman. Astiano. Yeah, I'm talking about Master. I'm going to say. I was I talking in trouble. Yeah, I think Fetterman Oz is going to be one of the most consequential elections that we'll see in the last decade, not just for its importance in the Senate, but you will never have a worse candidate than John Fetterman. No, like, you I won't. can't you won't. imagine you won't. his ideas are terrible. He has no communication. He like has a stroke. He's brain damaged. Yeah, and Mehmet yeah, yeah. Oz yeah. is the most milk toast. How do you get people like nobody's fired up about Mehmet Oz? He's not Lake Masters or whatnot. And so if we can't win that in a walk away, like it's it's terrifying. You know, the sad the sad part about it, Jason, is that nobody even cares that he's a freaking communist. Right. Nobody cares about the Fetterman. Yeah. Fetterman. The only reason that this guy's going to lose is because he's brain dead. Right. Yeah. yeah, his ideas are so horrible. He's like Bernie Sanders in he's to you know, the left Birch's of Bernie body. Sanders. And like the guy's terrible and he's brain damaged. And the fact that that like and let's face it, like 20, 30 percent are just always gonna go D D D D D D D, right? But you hope <laughs> right. that there's you hope that there's a percentage of people that go like, I don't care. This guy is just horrible ideas, bad for the country, and like he's not. He's a not a functioning human. I hope like, the ballot. I hope the ballot in Pennsylvania has oh. Oz Fetterman first before Mastriano. Right, because that way they hit the Oz <laughs> and then they get the. I can't vote for that Democrat guy, Mastriano. Right, because well, he'd be you know, so much better of a governor. Oh my word! I was watching. And I mean, I dressed casually, but he makes me look like I dressed. <laughs> I can't. Look, he's standing up there with his with his um. With his uh, jailhouse tattoos on, standing there with the president of the United States in jeans, uh, sl- dirty, dirty jeans, boy, and a and a and a, and a, and a jacket and Beetlejuice and- coming out of his neck. <laughs> oh man! Oh my oh. God! The lump, the lump. Jesus, man! But you know what, though, 
I thought about it. I was thinking about the title for today's show last night. And, it, and I didn't really come up with it until this morning. I feel so strongly about the House being Republican that I claim that this is the insurrection. This show, uh, I'm legal. It's a legal insurrection because they're going to take the House over. It's a realignment. Yeah, and, and, well, Hutch calls it realignment. I call it. Re- I call it. And, um, I was just looking for the legal term. <laughs> <laughs> no I, background but, coming up. They, but they are legally creating this insurrection to show the 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 politicians that the American people still are now. Don't don't get me wrong. They said this switch has nothing to do with the shining Republicans. No, it doesn't, it doesn't have nothing to it's do. It's in with spite the of them, right? Yep. It doesn't have. And I, I I even go as far as this. The the um the, this Republican, you know, I've been, you know, I really don't go around here talking um, um, red wave and all that stuff and everything because. I'll say it afterwards. I don't like saying it before. Man, I mean, you know, I, tomorrow I'll say, man, did you see that red tsunami? I don't, I don't like say saying I don't like saying something that somebody else made up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I mean, because when it don't happen, then you don't see that person anywhere. Or if you say it, you're just you're just riding off what they thought. Yeah. It's like we don't certain- want to be the 18 and 0, 18 and 0 Patriots going into the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, like the message needs to be vote, bring your neighbors, right. bring everybody you know. Yeah. Like but believe me, it don't have nothing to do with Republicans. It don't have and and really it don't have nothing to do with um the Demo- um with the Republican strategy. It doesn't. Right? It doesn't. This and they is think, and they and they think it does. No, right, exactly. They think that mandate you remember a long time ago when uh, um, when the other side used to always take um, a charge and then, oh, we have a mandate because American people is behind us and stuff. We can do anything we want to because we got a mandate. No, it's no, it's, it's two parties, y'all. It's two parties. That's it. That's and, you it. know, you hear them you hear him for a whole year screaming how the democracy is going to go away. No, no, this is democracy. Yeah. yeah. This, I mean, it's not really democracy on the literal definition because that's just mob rule. Mm-hmm. But this is our democratic form of government. Right. We're saying no, stop. Yeah. Hey, maybe on the plus side, like if we take the House and Senate, they'll they'll go to eliminate the filibuster. You know what I mean? <laughs> Democrats support that, right? <laughs> Let's yeah. get that lined up when Trump. Is I think off. I think what we need to do one of the most important thing we got to do we got to be able to walk and chew gum. Yep. After November eighth, but one of the things that needs to Preacher. be prioritized, and a whole lot of people need to be involved in it, is cleaning these freaking elections up. Yep. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. to, we need somebody needs to come down hard on Pennsylvania. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I want the FBI here, the new FBI. I want them here. I was going to say, I think you got to do the federal agencies too. Yeah, like we, we do. We have 87,000 yeah. freaking IRS agents. With so guns. we got to be able to do yeah, FBI take care of and dumb. corrupt yeah, as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and Wing tweeted about that this weekend. Like, if the Republicans take the House and Senate, they need to land and they need to say, here's our 10 points and here's what we're going to do and just stick to that script for 12 months. 12 you know, months. number one, we need to do these investigations. We need this legislation. We need this. We need this. We need this. They should work with President Trump to determine what that is to get us mm-hmm. on a glide path and keep it simple. Like these bills don't need to be these all encompassing bullshit things. Just like one piece, like when they wanted to lower insulin and it was in a 25,000 page bill, it's like, here's one bill. Here's what we want to do. Send it to Biden, fucking sign it. You don't want to sign it. We're holding your feet to the fire yeah, for veto, the next 24 right. months until the election. And then we're going to elect somebody that's going to put those policies in place. See, I'm Which, a military. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm a military officer, and one of the things that I look at is I look at targets uh, right. in relative to how close they are to me. Mm-hmm. You know, the ones that are 300 meters away, we could deal with them next month sometime, but them son of a guns right there with their bayonets fixed that are 50 meters away from me, we got to deal with them right now. And I think what the Congress needs to do, that the GOP Congress, is we have to set up some hella blocking positions. We got to stop this because the train's already running. The yep. border's already open. We got to do things immediately 
that are that are the most high priority things. So I think that I hope they can identify that. We got to get those people that went to the Capitol out of prison. They've been right. in there for almost a year and a half, and that's no way to live. That's going to kill some of them. That's that's nothing that Sanchez doesn't talk about. So um, with the and there's 150 Floridians in there. I'm sending Wayne a DeSantis shirt. I'll burn it. Okay, so um, <laughs> no, but I mean, with um, uh, both you both um, I can put both of that together of what you just said, Jason, about the ten points, and what Hutch just says about the day after um, the day after election um, with the holding the feet to the fire. The thing, but the thing is, the thing is the. No, no, no. Hutch said about walking and chewing bubble gum at the same time. If they can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, if they're just doing it every two weeks, we're going to do this. Every two weeks, we're going to do this. Every two weeks, we're going to do this. They're not going to get anything done because that's what they've been doing for long, forever. Instead of walking and chewing bubble gum at the same time, which they tell us that they can do, they just let things linger and kick it down. Come out on the television with some Frank Lunch platitudes. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, talk, talking about Frank Lunch, um, he came, he said the way that they count the votes is they count the votes of the people that voted first. Then they count the mail-in votes. And then they count something else. Why can't they count all the votes at the same time? Seriously. Why the most there's, sophisticated there's, there's, country in the history here? of mankind, and we can't count votes on election day. No, right. we won't. We won't count votes. Right, we won't. Count. Right, right, right. We won't. You got, you can have that group and that part of the auditorium you got this group in this part of the auditorium you got this group in this one and by eight o'clock nine o'clock everything's counted you don't have to wait to till this is done to do this that's not i mean what and by 2024 or at least 2028 every single voting machine ought to be crushed and we ought to be back to paper ballots I'm th- this is this is, you know <laughs> when you have when you sit there yeah. when you sit there and you see right in front of you that big tech google facebook Everything is all controlled by leftist slash communists. We're going to let big tech run our elections? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's we, get election day again. Can we have election that too. day? Why not? Like, Why we not? got election. Month. There are no more drop boxes. That's all right. done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you can't manage your shit well enough to get out and vote, now, and there can be exceptions, like, hey, I got surgery that day or whatever, you know, but like, just. My wife and I, we planned, hey, tomorrow, what are we doing? When are we going to go vote? Like, manage your right. shit. Right. If you got a problem, have a have a, 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 a in-person voting day that's not on election day. Have, make, right. make them go to the, the county seat or wherever. Make them right. go to the police station. Yes. Stacey Abrams came out um, yesterday or over the weekend and said her numbers are low in Georgia because black men can't see through Miss misinformation let me tell you something stacy <laughs> and anybody else out there to keep on saying that black men are dumb or black men can't put two words together or black men i'm tired of y'all using black men for um uh, for political talking points you already destroyed black men's culture in the 50s and 60s when you took us out when y'all pushed us out of the home so y'all could take the place so i mean everything that y'all are doing right now i'm sick of it i i I'm I'm sick of it if it happens on the left. And I'm sick of it if it, if it happens on the right. Candace Owens. E- either way, when y'all talk about black men like that, y'all now I understand we're all colorblind. We can you know we can't see color. Okay, y'all won't do that. We can do that. But I'm also proud. I'm also proud American, and I and I know who I am. I I know who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I'm happy to be Wayne Dupree. Um, veteran, uh, and 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 just because God blessed me with this color of skin, God bless us all with a color of skin. You know why? Because He loves color. He does. He He loves different colored people. He, he He loves. He He brings us all together. He wants us all to get along. Now, when that starts happening, you start kicking out the racist people. It'll be a wonderful, beautiful world. But when you come up to these politicians, these politicians start using that race using that color, then you start thinking about, well, okay, I'm wondering if social media is going to kick me off for what I got to say. Because a whole lot of people can kiss my ass about this color stuff. 
I'm serious. A whole lot of people can kiss my ass. And they can do something else down there, too. I, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, man, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. It's like you losing because you lose you're a loser candidate. You are, you are a loser candidate. And and you know, for, for you going around saying that you won for four years, you said I that know. you won the the gov um the gubernator the gubernatorial um, um campaign from 2018. You said you were governor. Why don't you go up to the governor's house and take it over? I tell you why, because you know you lost. Star Trek voted her the president of... Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so I, I mean, she that. got something. And can take we just that. revel in a minute? Yeah, like, what that. happens with Stacey Abrams and Beto O'Rourke after the election? Like, that was the future of the Democrat Party for the last six years. Like, and it's looking bad for both of them. So, I mean, where do they go from I here? I think you're looking at that across the entire spectrum of America. No, right. no, the world. <laughs> Not just America. It's it's more than just America. Well, and it's funny. Some of these guys are ducking and covering, like Mayor Pete. Nobody's heard a peep out of him for six months. Because he's he's, like, his world's getting ready to crash. Yeah, he's in, like, this in is a couple of weeks. I'm staying out of this. I mean, but look at Twitter's firing half their people. They got caught selling blue checks that they would never <laughs> get. They would never give me one, but they got caught selling them. Facebook's laying off thousands of people starting real soon. It's just delicious. Oh, and. Yeah. I was Jake crazy. Tapper's out, Don Lemon's out. All well, these you know people. What? I knew, I knew that Jake Tapper was going to go out. But Jake Tapper act like he didn't want to be there in the first place, right? And and in watching some of the stuff he was talking about, he was just a white Don Lemon. And Don Lemon got moved to the, um, the earlier time, so I was like, "Well, damn, he he's um." But the whole house of cards has fallen down. We need to we need to applaud. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah, we do need to rub their freaking noses in it. Just think how we've been treated for the last 10 years. It's time to rub their noses in it. I, I hope they're miserable as hell. Yeah. They, um, so, um, I got to say, too, chiming in on the racism thing, like, I'm a white dude. Uh, but the – yeah, I know, shocking. Shocking, yeah. But uh, the racism of low expectation that is put on the African-American community – is one of the greatest tragedies I've ever seen. I mean, I've worked in inner city areas and, and seen people. And, like, to think, oh, you're black, you can't figure out how to get your freaking ID to go vote or, you're you're not, or you know, we need to give them. You know, and it's funny. I can't remember who was talking. To, I think Scott Adams, the Dilbert guy, was talking about it. He said the one thing the Republican community should do as part of like their new platform is they're going to go into every inner city community and teach them basic financial skills, how to make money, how to do different things, how to, how to do budgets. Cause that's a huge, like I grew up poor. I grew up in a trailer park and like learning how to not be poor is a skill and you have to like, you actually have to do that. And if we want to improve and not just inner city African-American, but any of these poor communities, like teaching basic money management, is I mean, like when they when Joy Reid comes some out, of it, just, some of it's already there. Believe it or not, you just have to get them away from the cartels. Well, yeah, exactly. You got I mean, entrepreneurial like, yeah, enterprises. They, yeah, people in the communities want to do stuff. They just need to to get a guide path. Joy Reid comes out and says, oh, Joy "Nobody Reed. knows what inflation is." Like, are you kidding me? I learned that in middle school. Like, we. Dude, took I was here economics. in the seventies. I'll tell you all about inflation. Joy right? Reid. Think you know what? I ain't saying that she's doing anything sexual over there at MSNBC. <laughs> but she's outlived her time at that at that network. So she I don't know. How be like, I'm, I'm next, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, I don't know. What's your show on there? there? I just want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, well, I'm next, boy. Little, Tiffany, they got Tiffany. Oh, yeah. damn. Oh. And she's going to blame Tucker Carlson. <laughs> and she is the single most racist host yeah. on any oh. show ever. How do you stay on TV, on a network, when you lie about your blog and said somebody hacked it? And then the FBI yeah. came out and said, well, we didn't find nobody. Hacked it. And <laughs> right. and the whole story I forgot goes about that. The whole, the whole story goes away. I, you know what? I got a question, Wayne, I want to ask you because I don't get yeah, out that much. Way, my brother. I don't get out that much. And I was just wondering, there's a new phenomenon that I've seen. They talk about all these people 
leaving the Hispanic community and going to the Republican Party, leaving the Democrat. But then they change it up and they say black men are leaving the Democrat Party and going Republican. I saw that too. And I'm just wondering what's that about? Because I, I can't I can't I can't understand to me, Joy Reed is not a typical Pittsburgh City black woman. She's a millionaire or whatever the hell she is. She's eating she's eating S cargo somewhere. She's a million ugly. She is, but she's rich. She's got <laughs> yeah. a lot of money. And, and I don't see black women around here being like all liberal and stuff like that. I mean, they, I just wonder what that's about. I hear them say it and I'm like, what's that? I, you know what? You know how you know how you say um, you don't believe in the polls? Yeah. I don't believe in a whole lot of that report. Okay, either. good. I, no, I well, 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 I do believe that they're leaving the Dem Party. I do believe that. Just checking out, not signing in anywhere. I believe that they're waiting on the fence. I believe they're waiting on a fence. You, you remember, Hutch, you remember um, we had a guy on from Chicago, big boisterous type. Of yeah, guy, right? yeah. I think we interviewed him at CPAC too. And he got on there and said, we want Republicans to come in and talk to us. Yep. Remember that? We want them. We want them to, I, we, I mean, we... We were these weren't these weren't yeah. college professor guys either. These were no. street, these street, were street guys. Street. Yeah, yeah. We why won't they come and talk to us? We will we will open up a gym and and because uh, Al Sharpton don't do this to us and Jesse Jackson did this to us. We're waiting for Republicans to come in. I do remember that they are leaving the Dem Party, but they aren't joining the Republican Party. You know why? Mitch McConnell, yeah. Paul Ryan, yeah. John yeah. Boehner. Yeah. Those people don't give a damn about black Americans. Gatekeepers. Gatekeepers. That's all they are for the big corporations. Last, when's the last time you ever heard any when's the last time you ever heard uh Mitch McConnell said, Well, you know, we uh we we have to win the minority vote. We you know, we we, we have to well, increase worried about, worried about quality candidates. Yeah, yeah. Or when's the last time you ever um, heard um McCarthy talk about uh the black vote. He he might have said something about the Latino vote, but he, he don't talk about the black vote. And, and you know what? You know what? The opportunity is there. Washington D.C. is right next to the biggest ghetto in America. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah a couple blocks. A couple blocks. Where I was well, born. Let's, <laughs> let's put this in perspective. Who's the only president in our lifetime who actually had a strategy to improve the quality of life of inner city African Americans? It was Donald Trump and the Platinum Plan. Dude, you know. he got out of his car during the two. I, I never forget it. He, I mean, the cameras were following him. I was like, "Well, damn they 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 took a left at the wrong. No, they took a right at the wrong, <laughs> wrong street. Where are they going? I thought they were getting back on the freeway. Going to low risers. They driving down a, a a one lane street. That looked like the hood, <laughs> right? Wait a minute. The was that, was that the time down. he was in Detroit? Yeah. Or yeah, I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait. The Secret Service getting out, but they're in the hood. What? They're setting what? up a perimeter, <laughs> right? And who, and and who gets out? Trump and Ben Carson. They yep. get out walking, walking down the street. I was like, oh, you didn't won, motherfucker. You didn't won this one. <laughs> you didn't won this one, boy, because you don't expect Republicans to do that. No, you don't expect. No, you don't. No Republican has gotten out. In the Latino community, Asian community, not even a white community, really, not anymore. They they don't get out and do that. Shoot, I, oh, they Trump. don't even go to their districts anymore. No, no, they don't. Man, Dude, Trump, uh, Adam, Adam shifts over in France raising funds. Yeah, sure. and is that yeah. where he's been? I haven't heard much from Schiff. That was a couple weeks ago. No, he's yeah, getting yeah. ready to get embarrassed. He's getting ready to get embarrassed because he thinks he's going to be the speaker of the house. He was and, at the little boys convention at, yeah. in France. Hakeem Jeffries already though, locked that up. <laughs> here's how you'll know if shit's going weird in the election. Come Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, if stuff's not settled and they're still counting, if you see Shift and Brennan on MSNBC talking about election security, like that's the tip off. <laughs> that means the Democrats stole it and they're throwing out their guys who are going to say, oh, yeah, there's nothing to this. Yeah. I'll tell you, two people that are going to get thrown out after the midterms is going to be Pelosi and Biden. Oh, no, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. 
unless she's leaving because she has to take care of her husband. That works right. for me. Works okay. for me. That, that 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 that's we got to remember. I'm just that. trying to figure out how they're going to get rid of Harris. Oh, that's what I can't figure out. That's going to be the mystery theater. I don't know mm. how it's going to end up, but it's uh. Oh my God! I see you got Mitt Romney's niece queued up. Is oh she, yeah, she gonna talk about how we're gonna work with the, the left. I didn't even know that was Mitt Romney's niece, man. I had to stare at that for a little bit. I was like, Rona? Indeed, the Romney National Committee. Wow! What have you been doing to yourself? <laughs> she, she, she. That's a new. That, did she get a divorce? And you're entering the approach phase. <laughs> when the process is played out and the votes are canvassed and certified, every one of your Republican candidates will accept their results, even if they lose. They will. And here's what I'm going to say, too. Everybody's talking about this election denier. This is the language I just heard it on this segment before. Democrats, I have 150 examples. I've got a 10 minute video of Democrats denying elections from 2000 to 20. We've been saying that on this show. We, yep. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've been saying it on the show that Democrats have been doing the election denying long, way longer than Republicans, but mainstream media don't want to talk. About. 20. This is not what the American people are caring about right now. And let me tell you what they are worried about. Well, Our commander in chief, Joe Biden, going in front of the American people and talking about this and saying, oh, look at this, these issues with election deniers. Well, here's what the Democrats are. They're inflation deniers. They are crime deniers. They are education deniers. But this is literally a, okay, but this is. But this I, is not what the American people are talking about. I, they're not talking about. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to have. I, but we're, they're we're not voting on that. Okay, we're, we've been having, and I just did this, and we are doing so many uh, reports about the issues, which is important. But, but I'm talking to you, but to Deanna, But I'm talking to you as a Republican out from an national. election yeah. for the president of the United States to give a speech and not talk about inflation, to actually say it's good, to not talk about gas prices, to say that crime Listen, doesn't I'm not exist. here, I'm not a, I'm So not, they have become crime deniers, inflation I'm not deniers, here, okay. and education deniers. Ronna, I'm not, I'm not a, the big I am issue. not, I, I'm Nobody not a cares what you are. for I know, anybody but, and for them, but I will just say that that was a speech and they're out giving other speeches. But I want to talk about, I would, that's he's out giving other speeches. Message. I don't want you to put yeah. me in a position of, of having to defend them, but I'm explaining, yeah. and I'm giving you the facts. <laughs> and the fact is, <laughs> that is one and speech and he's giving other speeches. I want to ask you about results. Donald Trump. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm saying that's we're going to make that higher makes me taller than you. Can you please accept that inflation has risen on your watch? That kids have deficits on your watch. That are I want to ask open, about that fentanyl's coming. Across. I want to ask about Will looking you accept forward. That crime is rising. At- she did good. She did good. <laughs> she did. She I did. don't really like her, but she did good. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I I have my problem with Rona, but uh, <laughs> she did. Ain't no one's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She tried. Yeah. Um, there was. I'll tell you one thing about what what Rona McDaniel said though. You steal that election off of Doug Mastriano and he finds out, you better put your helmets on. He's not going to accept it. Not if it's not if it's provable. Here's another one. Nor should he. Here's another one. Yeah, the RNC, uh, Donald Trump, he is uh, already saying that he is going to run again. The RNC has paid more than $2.3 million to law firms representing him in his legal battles. I have to... I have to um, I have to say this before she continues. She she's asking this question under the the um, the thing Donald Trump says he's going to run again. That's that's what she said. Donald Trump says that he's going to run again. Okay. Listen to the rest. The chair of the RNC, uh, Donald Trump, he is uh, already saying that he is going to run again. The RNC has paid more than $2.3 million to law firms representing him in his legal battles. If and when he does announce, announce, will you stop paying his legal fees? We cannot pay legal bills for any candidate that's announced. So these are bills that came from the Letitia James lawsuit that started while he was president. Mm -hmm. It was voted on by our executive committee for our former president that this was a politically motivated investigation, and that's what it's been So for. no more. But we cannot. We cannot do in-kind contributions to any candidate. Right now, he's the former president who's being attacked from every which way with lawsuits, and he's certainly raised more into the RNC than we've spent on these bills. Will he announce soon? 
I don't know. Do you want him to announce him? <laughs> I, I am only voting. You just told her that he was going to. See, see, that's she did that under that guise that he was going to announce. So that she asked the question. But then she came right behind him. But is he going to announce? But you, but you just said that he was going to announce. You said it. Not, I didn't say it. You said and, it. So and, you and, asked me this question. And really, what business is it of the RNC to pay Donald Trump's legal bills? I was shot. You know, that whole thing is that that whole thing stinks. Yeah, it's nice that he's getting a hand. But why would you think that two million dollars would stop a billionaire? I was going to say, let's put this in perspective, like money's all scale, right? You know, if you're poor, a dollar's a big deal. If you're per, you know, middle class, a dollar's less of a big deal. You think Donald Trump really changes any decision in life about two point whatever million dollars? (laughs) Like he could literally like like I'm wearing my don't blame me. I voted for President Trump shirt. He could tweet that out today when his Twitter's live and make make five million dollars. Like, two million dollars. Two like, million dollars. He gives two shits about two right. million dollars. Two, two million dollars is one little tail wing on his jet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance for his new it's um, a repair part. Yeah. 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 That's right. all. Of this. Um. We were talking about Fetterman earlier. I yeah. run on Roe v. Wade. Oh. I celebrate the demise of Roe v. Wade. <laughs> That's the choice that we have between us. Look at the faces of the people us. behind them. They didn't, like, this is they, one oh of my the God, we're not voting for this, this are we? <laughs> Look at them. They're freaking dreading it in the back. Oh, did, you ever see, did you ever see all a lot? So many people so quiet. I they, know. They were so quiet. They look they like were, they're in church. Yeah. Here's the deal. Did you see the flags though? Yeah, that one where the flags all blew over. Oh, you didn't see that wing? Oh yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. God was like, "Oh hell no." <laughs> <laughs> and then Mastriano was doing a speech like just down the, you know, down the road, mm-hmm. and his had a uh his had a rainbow and like, yeah, it was beautiful. Oh man. His <laughs> wife was crying. It was really a great moment. He said actually. And I'm going to stand with Joe Biden, the most sedition free. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw a flag get knocked down like that. And I was in the army. Hillary. It happened. Did um, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It happened behind Hillary. Yeah. Yep. That would, this, this was like six flags and they all blew down. Yeah. Yeah. Got it's it like, in funny ways, my friends. Yeah, exactly. It's like, look, I'm trying to make a statement here. All the flags go down. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. All the flags. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. We're asking you to get out and vote tomorrow. We're asking you to vote for a change in this country. Yes, we've been here many times. We've we've pleaded with you many times. It's go time. It's, yes, it's go time. And after it's done, we're really asking you to be active and holding these people accountable. Stop sitting on the sidelines after you vote. Stop. We Please. may have to we may have to rally. We may have to go visit them. Yeah. I mean, and look, and don't suck your teeth or roll your eyes. It has to happen if they decide that they are too comfortable. Because I, I we've said it on the show before, Republicans get comfortable. They get comfortable when they're in charge. They don't they feel okay, guess what? We're on top of the hill. We can't raise money like we used to. We, uh, let's compromise. Let's compromise and, you know, we'll give them whatever they want. And then uh, because the the Dems have already started working on 2024 already. That's what Jason was talking about. They're, they've already started working on 2024. Yep. And they're going to use the loss of 2020 uh, of um, tomorrow. I mean, but but then again, y'all y'all have heard that from me, and the reason why I've been telling you that is because I want y'all to be ready. They're going to use this loss as a catapult or a a, a, a jumping beam into 2024. Yes, they might have some people come out of the woodwork. Michelle Obama might even come out of the woodwork. I don't know, but somebody's coming out of the woodwork to challenge old man Biden. Might and be guess Josh what? Shapiro could, could be. Guess what? They're gonna they're gonna beat an incumbent president if he runs. They 
and he lasts, they're gonna beat him in the um in the primaries. I'm yeah. telling you that right now. They're gonna beat him, they're gonna use him as a They'll cheat. Stone. if he gets there, they're gonna cheat him just like they cheat um cheated Bernie Sanders a yeah. couple years ago when Hillary cheated and and Bernie took it like a little woman did twice, didn't he? Twice. They gave him a little chair at the DNC and he's sitting up there. <laughs> Bernie and his little mittens going, oh my God. Wiping yeah, the dandruff yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look, take it for take from somebody who looks at this. Take, no, take it from us that look at it from this side and that side and that side. We're telling y'all they're going to use 2022 for 2024. It starts. I mean, the the fight starts at midnight tomorrow night. The fight starts it's then. Not close. Okay, it starts then. Do not give up. And probably probably by the end of the week, we'll be talking about twenty twenty four presidential candidates. Because I'm telling you, this is not going away. Especially with that Griffin guy. Fox News is pushing that Griffin guy now. Uh. Uh. And and I publicly boldly coming out and saying that he don't want Trump anymore. Good luck. He don't want Trump anymore. I'm gonna put my money toward DeSantis. I don't I don't want Trump anymore. And DeSantis already has um that Colorado uh, candidate who says oh, I'm gonna campaign okay. against Trump. I'm gonna pass this off to Jason in just a second. Anybody that was happy anybody that was angry because Trump Call him Ron Ron the Sanctimonious. Think about how would you feel if you did not if you said that you weren't gonna support somebody, but then your rival came and said, I'm gonna support this guy. And then that guy said, You know what? Thank you for that. I'm gonna support you, and then I'm gonna turn around, and I'm gonna uh, uh uh I'm gonna campaign with everything I got against that first guy that I turned down. Don't you think Trump was right? It had some type of justification for saying something? Something? At all? I mean, we're talking about it. We're talking about it. We're talking about it. Because honestly, Car- Carrie Lake to me oh, yeah. is is the is the successor. Oh yeah. To Trump to me. Carrie Lake. And the media's mad because they can't pinpoint, they can't stop her. They can't stop her. We'll see. She played, yes, I, and 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 for all, all, yes, she was a Democrat. Yes, she, yes, she was a liberal. So was I. That that's what gets me about Carrie Lake. <clears throat> Carrie Lake is like Donald Trump in that way. She knows the liberal games. She she wasn't raised conservative. She she grew up. She voted liberal. She voted for Obama. Okay, fine. Now she knows how to take on liberals. She didn't um, fly on somebody's coat. To, you know what? I ain't even going to go there. Go, I'm sorry, Jason. Last off, man. Go ahead. All right. Well, I, I got two for today. I mean, one, we all know to vote, right? But it's so important to vote the entire ballot because change in the country starts at the local level. And so if you haven't taken the time to review who your locals are for House and Senate, make sure if they don't identify Republican or conservative, you can tell, you know, and so vote, the, go out, vote, vote the whole ticket. And then I, I really like what Wayne said, I think for the conservative movement, for the MAGA pro-America movement, you know, come Wednesday morning, we all wake up hopefully in a new world and everybody needs to be involved in the change we want to see in the country. And conservatives are always like, we just hold the line. Like we gave up all this yardage and we just hold the line. We've got to take back that line. And that starts in your school boards. Mm -hmm. That starts in your mayor office. That starts in your city councilmen or women. That, That starts at the local level where we just say enough of this bullshit, let's just do the right things and, mm-hmm. and let's get the country back. And, and yeah, so stay involved. And, you know, we've, we've got a window here where we're going to turn things around and it's just with all of us working together, being the change. It's absolutely right. On November 8th, we're going to throw out the communists and on November 9th, we're going to usher in MAGA. Notice I didn't say the Republicans. I'm not a Republican, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm unaffiliated. I can't stand these people. They're destroying, that they're faking you out is what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, we'll deal with that on the 9th. On the 8th, we got to get the Democrats out. Yes. If you can help us out, ladies and gentlemen, share the show with somebody who's never watched it before or never listened to it before. You want to help us out. The onslaught is coming on the 9th from the fake news media. They're going to make it look like, they're going to try to make it look like that the new Republicans that are coming in are going to be the new Nazis. we right. got to get people to stop watching that stuff and start yeah. watching. If they can't watch this show, watch someone. Right. Watch somebody that has the real truth on their mind, not these phony corporate people. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. And you know what? And I'm glad I'm glad Hutch put that out there because there you don't have to remain or just stuck focus on the mainstream media. And that includes Fox News. It that includes Fox, includes News, Fox okay? News. There are there are many voices out there that are telling the truth. Um I say this and then we're roll. Twitter, the advertisers are leaving Twitter like the leaves falling off the trees for the fall season. Uh to me, I see that as the deep state. As part as corporations that are part of the deep state, that have been uh, for they have um, they support the the uh, the suppression of conservative voices on these platforms uh, because uh, Elon Musk doesn't want to do it. They're going to pause advertising and pause sponsorships to hurt his uh, new acquisition. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they've been doing the same thing to us as conservative voices on conservative platforms. For years. We don't have major donors. We don't have major sponsors. We work through you. We are listener supported. Don't don't get that wrong. We are listener and viewer supported. We, We survive because you help us exist. So if you feel free, I mean... You want to support the show? You go to givesingo.com forward slash Wayne Dupree show. Go there, give, give, send, go. There's the link right there, dot com forward slash Wayne Dupree show. Give whatever you can give. If not, share it. Share it and 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 pray for us that 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 we can continue doing this because we're gonna the way that they're attacking Twitter is the same way that they're attacking us. And but they've been doing us for a long time. They've been, you know, how you wring a rag and you wring it dry. That's what they've been doing to us for a long time. Okay, we're not dry. Sometimes it rains and you know we get rejuvenated. But we're just telling you right now we need your help. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's election day. Get out and vote. And and and, and if you don't vote, you don't have a leg to stand on when you talk about politics. Do you understand that, right?